Okay, I've been at this for almost nine years, all told. At this point, I've cooked more than 14 dozen countries twice, and I still have uh, 14 more to go. Question is, how much more can you stand? to Cliffy Land. This is week in country number 179 on our second attempt of cooking the food of every single country in the world. And tonight we're up to the nation of Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan, located in Central Asia, is on the Caspian Sea and is bordered by Iran, Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, and Tajikistan. And it is a really interesting country with one of the most interesting histories and kind of recent histories that you could possibly imagine. And if you've never even heard of the country or you don't even know what I'm talking about, take a minute after this and read up about it because it is really kind of kooky and it's far beyond the scope of what we're dealing with here but I recommend it. In any case it is a really interesting place with a very curious cuisine. Trivia note it is our second to last stand country we only have one more left and it is also the home of what was once the largest city on the earth. Of course, that was a long, long time ago, but still. As for the food, it is pretty typical of that of Central Asia in that you'll find lots of plovs, which is a kind of a layered dish involving rice and vegetables and usually nuts or fruits of some kind. We made a really spectacular one back when we cooked Azerbaijan, and that is so good that I've done it many times for company, and I just don't like having to do different plovs for all these different countries of this region, so forgive me if I don't do another the one this time. Still, they're really delicious. Also, you're going to find lots of dishes involving grilled meats and kebabs and lots of different things uh, involving melons. The nation is actually the largest melon producer in the region and was kind of where all the Soviet republics used to all get their melons from and they're really kind of famous for that. Also, bread is really important here too. Now, we had to deal with this all last time, so let's see how things went when we did this before. Well now, five years ago on the Global Cooking Challenge, I was able to cook and stream across three nights, which was really quite a bit. The first night I made a lamb and rhubarb stew, and I love me some lamb and I love me some rhubarb. However, that didn't come out really great because we're in Florida and fresh rhubarb is hard to come by even when it's in season. Therefore, it was just kind of like, okay. So we're not doing that one this time. The next night I made some lamb kebabs, which are really delicious, and I served that with the Turkmen plov, did I just mention plov a minute ago? That was really nice, but like I said, I don't want to have to be repeating plovs all the time here. When I invite you to dinner, please ask me to make one. It'll be really nice. In any case, what we are doing here tonight is what we did on the third night, which is kind of the or one of the national dishes of Turkmenistan, which is a Turkmen shepherd's pie, which uh, is really big and you poke a hole in the middle and usually you do it with a specific kind of stove and uh, we're just doing it here in our Western oven and so forth but it came out rather nicely last time. Looking forward to doing it this time. Bonus trivia night about the food of Turkmenistan. Like a lot of the food of Central Asia, ironically, even though they were on the Silk Road where Europeans would go to the East to get spices and bring them back home, there aren't a whole lot of spices in the food of this region. And that's interesting. I was really curious to see how things would go if I would make sure to at least, you know, salt and pepper properly. In any case, we need to see what goes into tonight's dish. For our Turkmen shepherd's pie, I will need First, for the filling, one pound of beef or lamb cut into small pieces, one tomato diced, one onion finely chopped, half of a bell pepper diced, one teaspoon of salt, one pinch of black pepper, one pinch of cayenne pepper, and half a cup of water. And for the dough, three tablespoons of butter softened, one teaspoon of salt, one and a quarter cups of lukewarm water heated to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, and 17 ounces or 500 grams of flour. That looks like it's gonna be really good. I love me some pie, so we need to get cooking. First prepare the filling. Into a bowl place the lamb, tomato, onion, bell pepper, salt, black pepper, cayenne pepper, and water, and mix it together. Then prepare the dough. In another large bowl, add the butter, salt, water, and flour. Mix together and knead until soft. 
divide the dough in half, and roll each half between your palms into a ball. Cover the dough balls with a kitchen towel and allow it to rest for five minutes. Take one ball of dough and sprinkle some flour on it, and roll it out into a circle of about 30 centimeters or 11.8 inches in diameter. Transfer the dough to a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Spread the filling evenly over the dough, leaving a one centimeter border. Roll out the remaining ball of dough to the same size as the first and place it over the filling. Fold the edge over itself and press down firmly to seal. Cut a small hole in the center of the pie to allow the steam to escape, and prick the rest of the surface with a fork. Brush the top of the pie with water and bake at 250 Celsius or 482 Fahrenheit on the middle rack until the top of the pie becomes light brown about 25 minutes. Serve right away. If you like, you may serve it with pickled cabbage on the side. was last time. It was very tasty. As you know, no great illusions here. It wasn't a spectacular jump up and down dish. It's simple peasant food. And like I said, it doesn't have a whole lot of in the way of spices. So if you season it properly with salt and pepper and you know, maybe if that cayenne pepper, you give it just enough, it might help, you know, balance things out. Still, it was very nice. I liked it. As a dish, I'm going to give that one four out of five globes. As a meal, it's not really enough to balance a meal. As you'll see, I served it with uh, pickled red cabbage. I could have, you know, tried to make a red cabbage dish from Turkmenistan myself, but I didn't have the wherewithal to do that, so I bought, you know, store-bought. It was a nice addition. It was nice to have a vegetable on the side. Still, it really felt like I needed some kind of starch. So, if you're making it yourself, you know, throw some potatoes or whatever else, and people from the country aren't going to be looking at you. So, don't get uh, too wrapped up in the details. So, that does it for this stint here in Asia. Next week, we head back out to the Pacific after a long time, too long if you ask me, to have the really, really tasty food of Tuvalu. See you then. These are not my original recipes. Links to the original recipes and their authors can be found in the about section. If you have any thoughtful feelings or helpful suggestions about what I'm doing, feel free to sound off in the comments here. If you like what you see, like, subscribe, hit that bell to be notified when these videos are posted. And of course, you can always follow us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. Thanks for coming by. See you next time. Happy eating.